Okay, so a sister paid for her brother's education, house, and now wedding. Well, it turns out this sister's not allowed to partake in anything involved in the wedding because the fiancé says so. Guys, this is one of the craziest stories ever. Let's check it out. I'm a 31-year-old female, and I have a 29-year-old brother, and he's getting married next year. We lost our mom in 2012 and our dad in 2016. We are each other's only living relatives. I have a good job. I earn a lot of money, about 150,000 euros per year. My brother also has a good job, but doesn't earn anywhere near as much, 35,000 euros. We were raised to always look after each other and share. My partner and I were child-free. Over the years, I've paid for my brother's master degree, paid the down payment on his house. Our parents rented, so there's no family home. I'll also be paying for my future sister-in-law and my brother to have future rounds of IVF. Sister-in-law works part-time and earns about 15000 a year. Her parents are not well off. My brother asked if I could contribute to the cost of the wedding. I said I'd pay for it as it is a small one with just a hundred guests and set up a wedding account for them which I put 25,000 euros in, which they both have access to. Sister-in-law, entire family are involved as bridesmaids and groomsmen. My husband and I are guests. Brother and sister-in-law have been going around venues with her family and I get emailed the cost if it's selected. I told my brother, I don't mind paying for the wedding, but I feel really weird that everyone else is involved in the decisions, and I'm just involved in paying. Brother has said that I'm not our parents, I can't replace our parents, and that's why I'm not involved. Why can't I just do something nice without making him feel like crap? Well, I feel like a jerk for causing drama, but I also feel taken advantage of. Am I the a-hole in this situation? What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. I hope you're having a great day. There's two updates for this one, and oh man, it's about to get spicy. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You can check out all the links down in the description below. And let's hop into update number one. This is in the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland to be exact. 35,000 is a good salary. I don't have student debt to pay off because I don't go to university. I was in the military before becoming a commercial pilot. My brother's salary will increase as his company needs him. He needed a master's to progress beyond his current rung. Sister-in-law works part-time because she has a medical issue. She'll never be able to work full-time because of this. Related, it is unclear if this is impacting infertility. In NI, you get one round of IVF on the NHS, which they did. They paid for two more at $8,000 each. Sister-in-law's family paid for another and stipulated that they would not be able to afford paying for the wedding, if that was the case. Brother and sister-in-law have been emotionally through the ringer with fertility issues. It isn't a cynical attempt to get money. For everyone talking about adoption, there is some serious BS about sister-in-law's illness meaning they aren't, quote, attractive candidates. I'm close with my brother, but do pay for things that we do together. He has really been there for me emotionally, especially during some personal problems I experienced just before and after I left the military. Future sister-in-law was too. They didn't plan the engagement party. Sister-in-law's family did, and they did not invite me because my husband and I are, quote, never available. We just have jobs that have us moving around a lot. Sister-in-law and brother were horrified. No one told them we had not been invited. They assumed we just did not show up. But that was resolved and we had a lovely meal together. My husband is supportive of our financial assistance. We are also helping his sister with her college fund. Though, why she had to go to the U.S. when we have university educations that don't cost an arm and a leg... Is beyond me. Also, any of you who have paid your way through an American degree, <laughs> I salute you. I still don't know what to do, but I do think maybe I'm not setting him up for success as I hoped. And also that I do deserve some recognition, 
even if it's just privately from him. We'll keep you updated. Update number two. This whole thing got really big, so sorry I wasn't able to respond to everyone's comments. I spoke to my brother and sister-in-law. Sister-in-law was saying she'd planned this with her brother and sister since she was a little girl. Her family knew her and what she wanted, and traditionally, weddings are about the bride, and the bride's family are heavily involved. I said, that's fine, but traditionally, the bride's family also pay, and they're more than welcome to if it's so traditional and important. I said, traditionally, the groom's family are also involved. She said I was shaming her family for not being well off. I said that wasn't my intention and that my brother's wedding is a big deal for my brother too and for me as his only family member. And to be honest, we've had a crappy time of it, so it's a nice occasion would be good. She said she understands that, but we don't have that same taste and she did not want to feel pressured into changing things that she had planned. I said I would not ask her to change stuff I just like to come with so I don't feel left out. As you can tell, this conversation isn't going anywhere. I said I'd like to give a speech at the reception in lieu of my dad to welcome her to the family. And she said this, Well, my dad will be welcoming Stephen to our family so that won't be necessary. Sister-in-law isn't interested in seeing me as or treating me like family and this is clear. So then, Sister-in-law's mother calls me and is like, Oh, hey, we're thinking you and your husband would like to help us send them on a honeymoon. I think it would be nice if it came from both sides. I lost it. I said, did she not think me paying for the entire wedding was enough? She said she had no idea that I was paying. She just assumed it was my brother. Which, let's be clear here, that makes no sense. Where are they going to find just $25,000 lying around when they've been saving for each other's rounds of IVF? So, at this point, I'm raging. I mean, wine in my pajamas raging. I call my brother. I tell him the situation and says that he didn't know they hadn't told that I've been paying. I was like, isn't that just the default assumption at this point? Bank of Sister is paying again. He said he appreciated everything I've done for him and that sister-in-law and sister-in-law's family just don't realize how much I've done and continue to do. He says that he'll sort it out. Brother smoothed things over and asked me how I would like to be involved. I said, in all honesty, the fact that it's taken several rows and a thread here for him to realize that I was not being treated with respect is hurtful and it should not take this level of drama to be included in my own family member's wedding. I said I would just attend as a guest. They can have sister-in-law's dream wedding, but that I will be taking a step back in general. I said I love him. I will always support him. I'll continue to support with the IVF, but otherwise my financial assistance is done. Education, house, wedding, it's over to them now. Brother said that's okay with him and asked if stepping back means we won't see each other as much. I said, no, I'm still his sister. Of course we will. But this has really upset me and left me feeling like you and sister-in-law don't value our relationship. Well, this went on for a while. I said, I'm not trying to ruin his wedding. I'm not going no contact. I'm just going to be a sister from now on. Stop trying to do what I think mom and dad would have done if they had the chance. We got into it about the pressures and obligations I felt since they passed. All very promising. I think I'm going to talk to the counselor about all this. Lots of it's unprocessed grief and an unreasonable thought in my mind. That if my brother doesn't want anything, then he won't be sad and won't feel the absence of our parents as much. We both agree this is for the best for us both. So let me run this by you guys and let me hear what you think about this one. Does anyone else think this will never end? Sister-in-law will call when she needs a new car. They want to send their kids to a fancy school. She wants a better house or they just need a vacation. She basically sounds like a financial vampire, ready to take money if it makes her look better. 
Her not telling the family that OP was paying for the wedding probably means she also did not tell them OP was paying for the IVF either. I think OP needs to take a big ol' step back and stop playing mom. Sister-in-law will just keep asking for more and more, and brother will just let it happen. Guys, unfortunately, I think that's exactly what's happening here. Do you agree or not? Let me know in the comments. The final story of the video. Our neighbor's crazy. He's drug addicted, who has multiple restraining orders against him. But since his parents own the apartment, the HOA can only fine him. We also own our own apartment, for context. Our neighbor downstairs and one over to us had mental health issues for years and apparently is a drug user as well. A few years ago, he attacked our neighbor in the next building with a bat and spent some time in jail. Things were quiet for a while when he got out, but then he started using again and alienated both his sister and his parents, who have since moved out of the apartment and abandoned him but continue to pay rent and any fines the HOA levies against them. We're all terrified of him. He screams at everyone, bangs his apartment so badly it makes the whole building shake. There's a text thread between my significant other and I and three of our neighbors every time he goes off, where we rotate who calls the police every time it happens. He screamed at my four-year-old and made him cry one day, and the other day, he screamed at me while I was carrying my five-month-old. I'm scared that he's going to just attack us or my children. He's surrounded by two other families, and they're both scared of him, too. We've talked to the HOA repeatedly, but they say they really can only implement fines in graduated schedule. So, he received a $400 fine yesterday and an $800 fine today but I get the feeling his parents will just pay the fine and be done with it. Is there anything that we can do? We've contacted the police so many times, it's not even funny. I'd contact a housing lawyer, but I'm not sure they tell me anything different than the HOA. We just want him gone. If he was a renter, he likely would have been, but since his parents are owners, we just feel stuck. Quick edit, I found this guy's legal record, Five misdemeanors, five felony cases, looks like they all got dismissed, and three domestic violence cases against his sister and parents. I wouldn't be surprised if his parents are terrified of him, but it's not right that he just gets to live near us, terrorizing us. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here. There's an update for this story and things are about to get juicy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking that big ol' red button underneath this video. And if you want more Mr. Redito videos, check the description below because there's going to be the links to the other channels. Make sure you subscribe to those two for daily videos. Here's the update to this crazy neighbor. Unfortunately, our update is not a positive one. I paid a consolation fee and talked to a lawyer about what our options were and getting our neighbor to stop terrorizing us. That same day, he threw a bag of garbage at another neighbor, then fled. The lawyer said that we could pursue a restraining order, but it's just a 50-50 chance that the judge would grant one. Typically, to grant a restraining order, the behavior needs to meet this threshold before. Section 5276 defines harassment as, quote, any unlawful violence, a credible threat of violence, or a knowing and willful course of conduct directed at a specific person that seriously alarms, annoys, or harasses, and that serves no legitimate purpose. Emphasis added, Section 527B further defines harassment as a course of conduct, which would cause a reasonable person to suffer substantial emotional distress and must actually cause substantial emotional distress to the plaintiff. Since my significant other and I only ever experienced verbal harassment, that could qualify under course of conduct. But this interpretation is usually up to the judge. Since our crazy neighbor threw a trash bag at our other neighbor, that could be considered assault, and if it actually hit her, it's considered battery. 
she ended up filing a temporary restraining order the next day. Even still, the only way we could have gotten rid of him was if he violated that restraining order and got arrested for that violation. Otherwise, that restraining order just simply wouldn't do too much. The lawyer did say it's possible to get a restraining order to protect against verbal harassment. So, if he screamed at us again, that might be a violation of the RO, and thus he could be arrested. WRT to the abstinence parents, he said case laws was against us, as typically it's very difficult to hold the parents culpable of the actions of an adult child. The HOA is also not on the hook either. He pointed to one case where a woman had spent years putting curses on other people and then went on to have an episode and killed another tenant. The parents of the tenant tried to sue the HOA for not removing the killer, but the court ruled against them, saying that it was not expected that because the lady was crazy, that she would also be violent in such a way to end a person's life. So the next day, we resolved to file a restraining order, but turns out we didn't need one. Over the weekend, someone, likely his parents, called a wellness check on the apartment. The police apparently checked in at 1 a.m. on Saturday and found the apartment completely ransacked. His body was in the bathroom. I don't know, man. This all sucks. I really wish he'd gotten help when he needed and that his parents had not abandoned him but likely they were just as afraid of him as we were and did not want him to be homeless. On the other hand, he was a terrible ducking person who terrorized all of us, made us afraid to live near him. After the news came out, our neighbor downstairs expressed how sad but relieved he was, and I can't help but feel the same. Guys, this was actually a sad story at the end. It sounded like that dude was going through a lot of mental health issues, and he was addicted to drugs, I just wish his parents could have been there for him. Even though we don't know the full story, they could have tried a million times for all I know. It's still emotional and sad though. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're not subscribed yet, click that subscribe button because Mr. Redito has daily videos across every channel. Mr. Redito Animated, Mr. Redito Stories, Mr. Redito Office Dramas. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a wonderful day.